have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. And that view is from the WB-57, which is one of NASA's high-altitude planes that is tracking. Um, now, because of the way that this uh, camera is configured, it does look like it is uh, dark, but it is indeed daytime, and you're beginning to see that plasma trail as uh, Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. All of that is expected. We are uh, anticipating an acquisition of signal around 2.51 p.m. Pacific time, so just minutes from now, and you may hear the core begin to hail out um, um, or call Dragon uh, for communications and see if we can potentially get communications with them a little bit earlier. Following this, we'll have two events in rapid succession. We'll have the Drogue parachutes deploy at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, followed by the mains just one minute later at 2.54 p.m. Pacific time, ahead of a splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Pretty, in pretty incredible views of the Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um, Freedom, SpaceX, comm check. All right, we're gonna start hearing uh, the SpaceX Crew Operations Research, Resource Engineer. SpaceX, Freedom is with you. 4.16, enjoying the ride. Copy that, Freedom. Great news there from Commander Nick Haig reporting back. We see a healthy flight computer. Expect automated shoot deployment. Like we said before, things moving very quickly as Dragon Freedom makes its way home. Next event uh, coming up will be deployment of the Drogue parachutes. This occurs around 18,000 feet. GPS has converged. Expect nominal altitude for Drogue chute deployment. We're about two minutes away from deployment of those drogue parachutes. Now the heat shield uh, is is continuing to work to slow the vehicle down. That that entry period, the the space the excuse me, the the Dragon spacecraft went from orbital velocity about 17,500 miles per hour down to about 350 miles per hour. So it really gives you a sense of why that plasma builds up on the exterior of the capsule thanks to the heat shield and the work that it does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to uh, about 119 miles per hour. We can see... 15 kilometers. Brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. Once again, the capsules are going about 350 miles per hour when the drogues are deployed. Um, those drogue parachutes that we manufacture here in-house are uh, going to slow the, the, the spacecraft down to 119 miles per hour. And that is when we will see the main parachutes deploy, and that occurs about 6,000 feet above the ocean's surface. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom as it returns back to Earth. We are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high-altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate normal. You can hear the crowd here. Visual on two healthy drogues. Crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. 
As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy mains. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining yeah. us, you're looking at 800 meters, a live view of Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Copy, was... 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel, uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their, uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for Splashdown, located in the Gulf of America, um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And Splashdown, Crew 9, back on Earth. Good main release. Copy splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing thing. What a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear. And as you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation of splashdown. Dragon Freedom has returned home and NASA astronauts. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are en route. Okay. Uh, I understand. And, uh, we're in section two, four decimal 800 uh, landing response. And uh, looking for your word. I'm just going to is necessary. 
we can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule, these fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We want to make sure we uh, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. Uh, the hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on-orbit uh, on-orbit burns to con to maneuver the the spacecraft, unfortunately, those hypergolics are um, are are unable to be breathed. They they are toxic, and so this team here is doing those initial safety checks to make sure that it is safe for the rest of the recovery team to approach the spacecraft. They're also checking to make sure that any residuals from the, the pyros are, are safe and um, are not going to cause any issues. We can see the team working their way around the spacecraft to do these, um, event, basically these, these sniff tests on all of those Draco thrusters. Racing. There it goes, Dragon Freedom being lifted out of the water and onto our recovery vessel, Megan. So once securely on, uh, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks and stand by for translation to the egress platform. We have to depress the seal around the side hatch, um, as well as you know we'll now see them uh, open that side hatch up. And there you have it. The side hatch is open for the first time since September. So we are standing by for that egress. Outside of Dragon, you do see one of those stretchers. This is the expected procedure as the crew will be taken to medical facilities following their exit from Dragon. We can see folks on board clapping as our first crew member. And that is NASA astronaut Nick Haig, commander of Crew 9, now out of Crew Dragon Freedom. Some smiles, thumbs up, and a wave. Can't get any better than that. Yeah, that is one happy camper, that's for sure. Next step out of the capsule, we expect Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, his first space flight, spent 171 days in space alongside NASA astronaut Nick Haig. Looks like we're getting some cheers and clapping on board as Alexander is slid down the little ramp and placed into the mobility aid. Again, big smile. <laughs> 
For those of you that have just recently joined, the Dragon had an on-time splashdown. Uh, looks like we're getting our next crew member here. That is none other than Sunny Williams. Big smile, big waves. She, like her other crew members, now uh, will be assisted onto the mobility aid. There we have it, some waves, some thumbs up, and some smiles. Definitely seems to be a theme among all recovery operations. Absolutely. And of course, that leaves NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore inside Dragon in seat four. We're getting some views of him now as he egresses or exits the spacecraft. Once again, some elation and cheers there from Butch Wilmore. As we mentioned before, returning to Earth from coming from a microgravity environment can wreak havoc on the body. So it is customary uh, and just standard procedure for all of our long-term space residents to uh, get assistance once they are back on board the recovery vessel.